Well, here we are another day. Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Welcome to Wednesday. Uh, great to be with you again. Uh, John, you had Pub Theology last night. Yeah, we had a great crew. We had 18 people sign on, but those sign-ons had more than one person in them. There so you probably go. probably 25 for Cinco de Mayo. It's nice. It's just great to see people, hear people, great conversation about living into our baptismal vocations. Baptismal vocations. Nice. The most important question, though, is... Did anybody wear a sombrero? There were there was one sombrero and who had the sombrero? Paul Gallish okay. had, had a sombrero, and there were many margaritas, modelos, coronas, and sangrias. <laughs> so there's going to be a swath of gold, gold stars, stars going out going tonight. Out today. <laughs> yeah, it was That's great. Awesome. It was great. That's awesome. And then we have we have owls coming up next Tuesday, right? Yep. On the May twelfth, Alan Andrade is leading a presentation on the SS Leopoldville. Uh, we're currently working out the logistics of getting PowerPoint and getting all that s set up. So an invitation to that lunch will be going out to our, our OWLS crew. Um, yeah. So be on the lookout for that in your inbox. But just, yeah, a lot of wonderful social stuff going on at St. Phillips. Yeah, I've got my study today, tomorrow, next week. If you want to be a part, uh, let me know. I'm happy to let you uh, in on that as well. So I think we're good. Yeah. So I think we're good. Why don't we get down to uh, our scripture today? Um, we're, of course, looking at the scriptures that uh, we had on Sunday. Yep. Because mm -hmm. uh, it was Good Shepherd Sunday, uh, kind of the fourth Sunday of the Easter season um, is, good, is Good Shepherd Sunday. So naturally, I think every Good Shepherd Sunday, the psalm is Psalm 23. So, um, so here we go. Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul and leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is overflowing. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Right to the point. I always, I always retranslate this, because whenever that we get these translations, it's, you know, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I'm like, yeah. everybody wants the valley of the shadow of death. Exactly. I mean, that's what we all know growing up. So I always, like, retranslate it when I read it. It's like when we get the Lord's Prayer of, you know, if people put debtors in there, I can't uh -huh, even say it. Uh -huh. really. Since like, <laughs> there are just some things that should be left alone, unchanged. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, this John, this is a, a classic psalm. Um, uh, most people who don't know a lot of scripture know this one. Know this one, and uh, most people can recite it uh, by memory. Uh, some people like me can start reciting it by memory and get halfway through. Uh, that's a that's a great story. The very first time I ever did um, pastoral care, I was um, at uh, I was on CPE. That's mm. clinical pastoral education. You do that between your first and second year of, of yep. seminary in the summer. And so I was in this uh, room, and it was awful. It was a, a self inflicted gunshot wound to a thirteen year old. Um, and the family was there and it was just an awful situation. And I, invite, I said, you know, can I pray? Can I recite the 23rd Psalm with you? It's like, oh, please do that. And, you know, I get partway through it. It's like, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters. He anoints my soul in the darkest. Like, I completely blanked on it right in there. I've said it a million times. I completely blanked on it. The family in the midst of all that just kind of started laughing and just thought it was funny. And I'm like, oh, thank God. I'm like, let me grab a Bible from the nurse's station. So I grabbed the Bible, and then we started over and did it. But um, Been there, done that. <laughs> it's like you try to be just so good, folks, and you just can't do it. But... It was it broke the ice in what was really kind of a really hard situation. So every time I read Psalm twenty three, I think back on that family, I think back on that young man uh, who passed away, and uh, just a hard hard thing. But um, the Psalm they loved it, and um, you know sent me a note a month later to thank 
me for reading it and they even put a little joke in there or mm-hmm. barely getting through it, you know, that kind of thing. So, so it was good. But um, I, people love this psalm. Uh, I, I think, John, they love the, the idea of those green pastures, the still waters. And I think what people walk away with is just the sense of peace. Yeah, I think it's, you know, when you close your eyes, it's it's kind of an idyllic vision that the psalmist lifts up of, you know, if I'm meditating, that's what I want to picture, where I'm, you know, just on a nature walk. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, there's some things on nature walks that I'm not excited to see. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But for the most part, it's really relaxing and comforting, yeah. and I think that's, you know, we get all these different visions of what eternal life looks like and I think for most people that's where they kind of hang their hat on yeah yeah of, I would be very very happy to see that a green pasture with a nice brook going by it you know trickling water picnic basket for me maybe a beverage of my choosing <laughs> that's that's all right I'd take that any day yeah the 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 key behind it um is the shepherding imagery though um and this sense that we've been playing with, even in what you preached uh, about, you preached about the gate on Sunday, John. No gate uh, in this one. There was no gate in this one. You actually get a shepherd in this one. Um, and you probably don't even need a gate nope. in this one. It's, it's written in that way. Um, but there is a real sense of um, still playing, even in the gospel that you preached about. Uh, it was John 10, verses 1 to 10. That, there's, that there's the, are, there are voices that the sheep hear um in in what you read they're thieves and bandits the sheep don't know their voices but the shepherd they know the voice of and um and and that's a harkens to the image that the sheep know their shepherd they know the shepherd's there to take care of them they know the shepherd is there to watch over them if the wolf comes if the thief or the bandit comes the shepherd's right there that there's nothing that they have to worry about Um, That's why you get this image of, you know, even though I'm walking through that valley of the shadow of death, I'm not fearing that evil. I'm not fearing what is breaking in around me. The psalmist might talk about Sheol. We've heard Sheol over the last couple weeks. I'm not afraid of Sheol at all because I know that there's a voice that's talking to me right there. You know, either saying, get away, get away, I got you, and fighting off that. Yeah. Or come to me, I've got you. Yeah, as you said that, I was thinking about the last two days that I've gone home. And Quinn is at the stage where she's recognizing my voice and Emma's mm. voice. Mm-hmm. And when we talk, there's that, it started the creeping smile that's coming in of, oh, I know this voice. This voice is safe. This voice is happy. And I know that I'm getting my needs met. And I was thinking about that going, you know, I don't think Jesus intended us to go to that place, but I think for all of us, we've had that family experience of whether it's our parents or our own children of having that voice that we hear that sets us at ease Mm -hmm. or that person we could listen to talk forever and ever and we just fall into the lilt of their voice. It's just comforting. And I think God's word really does that to us. Yeah. And I, th- and I think that's important too, because that's the imagery. That's the imagery that even comes out of um, the, the the Easter story, uh, back from Easter Sunday, with you know when you know Mary's talking to who she thinks is the gardener. It's Jesus, but he calls her name, and the sense that okay, I I he's called my name a million times. I know that voice, and all of a sudden there's recognition, and there's joy, and there's comfort, and. Um, I think this is a great psalm for this time for people. Um, it's funny. Um, Terry Suttered here in our congregation does my taxes. Um, and she just sent out an email just talking about, um, you know, not playing into the hype of all that's going on, you know, the conspiracy theories about where the virus came from or who's to blame and that kind of thing. But, um, but just talking about our joy in this time um, really comes from kind of ourselves and, and, and how we how we are, are living our lives and everything and, and I think I think if Terry wasn't sending it out by before business Terry would probably have also said 
you know, our, our joy also comes from knowing that God is there holding on to us, that he's calling to us. And with that voice that we know, um, you could have said that, Terry. <laughs> you could have. Uh, you don't have to, but you could have. And in your heart, I know you did. Um, but um, I, I think it's the same. It's the same thing. Not buying into the noise, but listening to the voice of our shepherd calling to us, offering us that peace. Yeah, and it's a reminder, I think, for us that this is this isn't a psalm that we just hang our hat on when our chips are down. Mm-hmm. That this is an everyday psalm. Yeah. That there's joy and struggle, there's restoration, there's, it really is a daily walk, I think. It encapsulates our daily walk with faith and life in God. Yeah. I think this is also one of those great Psalms, John, that you can dwell in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't just read it and say, oh, love that one and move on. What does it actually say? Yeah. And, And how do we actually... Yeah, if you go line by line, right, you know, where you're thinking of the Lord is my shepherd, so I will not want. What's that mean today for you? Yeah, what did, what did I sit there and go, I'd really like to have that today. Yeah. I'd like to have a breakfast sandwich from McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> Do I need that? No. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, just that sense that everything that we need is kind of fulfilled within. I'm not left wanting for anything. You know, even even in a time like this where yeah. we want for a whole lot, like, you know, no murder hornets. And yeah, and I think I think that really is a, a, a really poignant right now of are all of our fundamental needs met. Yeah. Family, social, socialness in in some way, in some way, faith, food, salvation. Yeah. Salvation's not in question right now. God's grace, yeah. that's something you can't question right now that we hang our hat on and hold on to, right? All those things. Exactly, John. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Today, maybe like uh, hang your hat on each one of these. Uh, there's six verses, right? So, you know, there's probably more phrases than that. Dwell in them for a little bit. Take an hour. Dwell on that first one. Yeah. You know, not sit there and do nothing else, but... Keep coming back to it. Yeah, keep coming back to it. There are places where I think our cup is running over. Yeah. Even when we feel like it's half empty. Yeah. Yeah. You come home and hear Quinn yeah, squawking get, at you. I Your get, cup's running over, uh, John. Uh huh. Oh yeah. It's a blessing. Maybe not at two a.m. No, that was that was last <laughs> night. <laughs> you want to pray us out? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Lord be with you. And also with you. Gracious God, you. Shepherd us through the good, the bad of life. You call to us every morning to walk with you in faith, in joy, in struggle, in pain. And we walk with you towards the cross of your Son, where you have opened the gates of eternal life to us and assured us that salvation is ours no matter what. Help us in the midst of this uncertain and unprecedented time to trust that you are walking with us through this valley to whatever is in store for us when we come back to life together as church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. One shout out. Shout out. One shout out. Chris Nelson. Look, Mom. It's all cleaned up. (laughs) Have a great day, Mom. Take care. Bye.